The Nintendo 64 may no longer be the fastest, most powerful console on earth. Some may argue that it never was. However, it did have some fantastic games, and these are outside of the first party and rare titles. Today we're looking at the top 20 Nintendo 64 racing games. Hope you guys enjoy. Kicking off the list, we have Top Gear Rally 2. Now this was a step up from the original in every single way with better graphics, really, really fun gameplay. And I think the defining feature here was the four player mode, which was just a huge amount of fun on the system. At number 19 is Scars. Now this never actually did much for me back in the day, but I think a lot of these races that aren't very realistic and a cart-like have actually aged really well. And I was playing it recently and it's got some great dynamics and some great little touches. You can jump with your car, jump over obstacles, and I actually had a huge amount of fun with this one. So Scars is at number 19. So the Nintendo 64 version of Cruising USA wasn't great, had a horrible frame rate, horrible blocky graphics. Cruising World was better in every single way. It still used a lot of the same pre-rendered 3D sprites, but it still has that charm that I think only the 90s cruising games could possibly have. It's a huge, huge amount of fun to play and has a lot of style, and I think that's why it still holds up today. So number 18, Cruising World. Number 17 is F1 World Grand Prix. Now, for me, this was so much better than the F1 PlayStation games. It looked absolutely fantastic. It played great, and it still plays great today. I had a huge amount of fun when I was testing this one out. I think the reason it's not higher is, sadly, F1 games have fallen into that sports category game where you wouldn't really want to play this over a modern you know, annual iteration of F1. But if you want to go back and see what F1 games used to be, this was definitely top of its class in its day. F1 World Grand Prix. I loved the original Sega Mega Drive Micro Machines. And when I heard that the third game was coming in 3D, I was massively excited. Now the game, to me, back in the day, didn't really live up to expectations. However, the Nintendo 64 version has actually aged very, very well and is a really, really fun game to play. And it has the upper hand over the PlayStation version because it's much, much smoother frame rate, much, much cleaner visuals. So it looks really, really good. I actually had a blast going back to this. So actually, if maybe you overlook this one, you should definitely check out Micro Machines 64. Snowboard Kids is just one of the most fun, innocent games that you will ever play. And on the N64, it did everything right. Great animations, rock solid frame rate, and one of the most fun multiplayer games that you will play on the system. So taking more of a relaxed and chilled view on the genre than say 1080 snowboarding, Snowball Kids is definitely a game. If you missed it, you should check out. At number 14 is Mickey's Speedway USA. Now, this is a strange one because it was released late in the N64's life cycle. It looks great. It was made by Rare, who had made Diddy Kong Racing. Um, and it's a great fun game to play, but something just seemed to be missing. I'm not sure if it was the power-ups, but the game just didn't seem to have the fun factor of other kart races on the system. Still, it's one of the best and you should definitely check out Mickey Speedway USA if you missed it back in 2000. At number 13 is Extreme G and this was really a revolution when it released. It featured tight twisty tracks, rock solid smooth frame rate uh, and rapid speed and back when we saw this it was like nothing that we had ever previously seen on the system. You know it was futuristic, fast, 
great weapons and was just a lot of fun and i'm thankful to say actually a lot of what was good about it back then has remained to this day it's a lot of fun to play so number 13 extreme g At number 12 is the phenomenal Hydro Thunder. And this is a game that would be significantly higher if it didn't have the absolutely excellent Arcade Perfect Dreamcast version. But the Nintendo 64 version is actually one of the best looking games on the system. And they did a phenomenal job converting it and putting it onto the N64. You can see here from the footage that it's looks absolutely wonderful and i'm thankful to say that the gameplay remain, remained absolutely intact so if you have an n64 and want to check this one out hydro thunder is a fantastic racing game Three, two, one, so just outside the top 10 is the excellently regarded Excite Bike 64. Now, for me, this is a strange one because I always loved the Motocross Madness games on the PC. And whilst I liked this, I never really loved it as much as the Microsoft games that came out. So for me, you know, many people consider this one of the best races on the system. For me, it's just missing something. And I can't quite pinpoint why I don't see this up there with the best of them. But it's still a solid effort. It's definitely the best motocross game on the N64. So if you like these sorts of games, definitely check out Excite Bike 64. Into the top 10 then, and the Nintendo 64 actually had some fantastic conversions of great PlayStation racers. And Wipeout is no exception. Wipeout 64 is, is based around Wipeout 2097 or Wipeout XL if you're in the States. And it took a lot of those, it changed a lot of the textures, reversed a lot of the tracks. So even if you love the playstation game it's definitely worth a look at this another thing i love about this version is the fact that the analog control on the n64 just feels really good i always felt the playstation that digital controller just didn't really do it the same justice as the n64 version so wipeout 64 is definitely worth a look at number 10. So before Traveller's Tales took the Lego franchise and made a movie game of every major movie franchise, they actually had a fantastic little racer on the N64 Lego Racers. And I think this is a little bit of an, a hidden gem on the system. Uh, I had a ton of fun. I played this a huge amount back in the day. And there's something about it that just is charming. The racing's great. You can customize and build your own vehicles. The track layout is really, really excellent. And it's one of those games that is easy to pick up, but I think quite tough to master. So Lego Racers, a little bit of a hidden gem at number nine. Number eight is another game that I think would be higher on this list if it wasn't for the arcade perfect Dreamcast version, and that's San Francisco Rush 2049. Now, again, the N64 version is an absolutely stunning conversion and looks really, really good on the hardware. It definitely does push it. You get some frame dips here and there, but it really does recreate the arcade experience and should definitely be considered if you're looking at great racing games on the N64. Number eight, San Francisco Rush 2049. At number eight is the fantastic conversion of Ridge Racer. Now, the Ridge Racer franchise, obviously famous on the PlayStation. And amazingly, this one never came out outside of the US, never came to Europe. So I've got an import cart of this one. And it's a really, really good version. It's a really, really different version. And if you didn't own a PlayStation, this to me is one of the best racing games on the system that everybody should check out. So Ridge Racer 64 is at number eight. Star Wars Racer was without doubt the 
best thing to come out of the Phantom Menace movie. Now, the game on the N64 looked fantastic. Fast, fluid action, loads of different tracks. Uh, and it took the element of the movie that everybody loved, the pod racing, and just perfectly captured it in a game for the time. Now, once again, the game's been re-released, so definitely recommend probably checking out the Switch version if you want to play the game today. But if you want to play it in its classic original form, the N64 version is still a fantastic time. Now, if I said to you today that a game was being made just about Volkswagen Beetles, driving around remote British Coventry Castle, etc., you'd probably think it was a promotional app. But back in the day, this actually ended up being one of the most interesting, fun, innovative races that you could play. Beetle Adventure Racing was brilliant. Great control, really imaginative tracks, fantastic shortcuts. It just played and looked phenomenal. And it makes me sad that I don't think this sort of game would ever come out today in the same way. It's almost a you know, time capsule in itself because I think that this sort of genre of game, racing games now need to have it all, right? It needs to be your Forza Horizons or your Gran Turismo. And I think this sort of game on a mainstream console has really disappeared. So definitely for a trip down memory lane, check out Beetle Adventure Racing. At number four is a game that I don't think I fully appreciated back in the day, uh, and that is F-Zero X. Now, I think when you see this game, when you originally saw it, for example, and it didn't have shaders on the textures, and a lot of the backgrounds were just plain black, you can see from the images here, it sort of put a lot of people off. But when you actually see how rock solid and smooth and fast this game is, and you're driving along with five or six other cars around you, it really is a huge amount of fun. And I think a game that was, you know, it's well regarded, but it's very much not seen in the same echelons as F-Zero GX and the original Mode 7 F-Zero. So I definitely think if you're looking back, this is one of the best N64 games and definitely give this one a go because I had a huge amount of fun. Top three now and Wave Race and its revolutionary water effects to me actually still look great. There's a fantastic Digital Foundry video on how the water was created, which I personally find really interesting. It's a real riot to play this one. Huge, huge amount of fun uh, and really was, I think, an early showpiece for the system. If you have an N64 and you haven't played this, it needs to be rectified right away because I don't think any game since has really been any better than Wave Race 64 in the genre. So I think everybody knew it was going to come down to two kart races for what stood the test of time as the best Nintendo 64 racing game. And I've gone with Mario's effort at number two. Now, this is probably stronger than Diddy Kong Racing from a multiplayer perspective. But for me, it just didn't quite do enough. It's a lot of fun, but it just didn't have the depth of Diddy Kong Racing, particularly in the single player mode. Uh, now you can see here another slightly disappointing thing was the fact that they used pre-rendered 3D visuals for the characters. It doesn't look bad today, um, but I think it definitely just misses the mark and is definitely not one of the classic entries in the Mario Kart franchise. Still, second best racing game in my opinion on the Nintendo 64, so by no means a bad game, but in the kart racing genre, I think it comes out at number two, and it's also the number two racing game on the Nintendo 64. So here it is, my favorite racing game on the Nintendo 64, and it's Rare's Diddy Kong Racing. Now I think the graphics were spectacular. You had three vehicles in the Sonic Transformed style with air, boat, and 
obviously kart racing uh, and it also had an adventure mode with a hub world that was just so engrossing you did the whole thing there was different uh, adventures quests different modes to play now i actually think it, it just misses out to mario 64 in the four player category but i think as an overall package i just give this one the edge uh, in terms of my favorite game on the nintendo 64 so hope you enjoyed the video obviously love it if you like subscribe if you had because like i said i've really enjoyed making these enjoy